Hi, I'm Reverend Tom Kearns. Welcome to 333 Magic 9, where the tarot cards and astrology stars come together to help you by combining the visual messages of the tarot and the energy of astrology, you can be prepared for the opportunities and the challenges that are coming your way this month. I hope you will like this video and also press the little bell for notifications when my new videos come out. The tarot card for the first week of the month is the King of Swords. He represents strength and wisdom. The tarot card for the second week of the month is the Five of Cups. It represents disappointment and loss. The tarot card for the third week of the month is the Strength card. It represents spiritual courage. And the tarot card for the fourth week of the month is the Hierophant. He represents the power of culture and tradition. Aries, the tarot card for the first week is the King of Swords. He is strong and determined, and these are qualities you may need because there is a challenge this week that demands that frivolous activities must be cut out so important changes can be made. Be cautious, but take action when you must. Now, as we look down into the astrology, the month begins with a powerful Mercury-Pluto square from your second to your eleventh houses. It is important that you realize that money and friendships do not always mix well. You need to protect your resources since there may be people who are misleading your humanitarian instincts. You may think you're doing the right thing, but make sure you're on the same page as the organizations you support. They might not be going where you want to go. A sextile from Saturn to Mercury will help maintain some common sense. And the full moon in the seventh house of relationships, so there may be emotional issues that need to be cleared up. Just remember that all people are a little extra sensitive around the time of the full moon. Now, as we look into the second week, the tarot card is the Five of Cups. This card shows a man looking depressed. He has lost something, shown by the three spilled cups. But there is a castle in the distance and a bridge leading to it, suggesting a better future is possible, but he must take positive steps to get there. Now, as we look into the astrology, week two opens with Venus sextile Neptune and Mercury sextile Mars. Now, Venus and Mercury are both in your second house, and this is the house of resources. So you may feel that money is easy to come by. Now, that may be true, but it may be also easy to spend. So if any good fortune comes your way, be careful to save a bit for a rainy day. Now, there is a Venus trine to Pluto, and that will show you what you value the most. And then Jupiter conjuncting the sun in your first house will boost your ego and optimism and your willingness to go on a personal adventure. Just use a little wisdom. Because there is a square from Venus in the second house to Saturn up in the twelfth house at the end of the week. Now that warns you to protect your assets. You may not understand what's going on behind the scenes and in secret dealings. The tower card for the third week of the month is the strength card. It shows a woman with great confidence closing a lion's mouth. Above her head is the infinity symbol. It represents the ability to control our animal nature through the use of our superconscious mind. We don't feel, fear our nature, we incorporate its energy. Now, as we look into the astrology for the third week, it begins with a powerful Sun-Pluto square that connects your second and your 11th houses. Now, this presents you with an important personal conflict that demands resolution. 
You know deep inside that you have more to achieve in life, but you don't know exactly what to do to find your personal value. You may have to give up some preconceived notions and dig deep within yourself to realize what you need to give up and what you need to pursue to follow your dreams of success. Now there is a new moon in your first house and that can bring a new sense of energy and vitality to you. This is a good time to spruce up your personality and your appearance and make any changes that project the real you. Now, as we look at the tarot cards for the fourth week, it is the Hierophant. It shows a priest on a throne of power. It represents the power of tradition and social structure. It suggests there may be a need to approach spirituality and life in general in a more open and fluid manner. So don't get stuck in a rut. Now, as we look down into the astrology, the month ends with some very nice energy as the sun in your second house sextiles Saturn in the 12th, bringing stability through quiet situations. Take some time to meditate or do some type of inner work. Now, Mars in your fourth house of foundations will sextile Uranus in the second house of money, <laughs> helping you make improvements to your home and family situation. Now, if you need to make a move, this may be the perfect time to do so. And beautiful Venus will conjunct the moon, which adds a sense of romanticism to communications and travel. Take advantage of this fleeting energy by taking your favorite date to the most romantic restaurant in town. You'll both enjoy the food, the ambience, and the love. Woo! Hi, I'm Reverend Tom Kearns, and this is my story. If you are a spiritual seeker, it may help you on your journey. I believe your spiritual development is as important as your religion. If you look at Christianity, it focuses on the life of Jesus. But Jesus was never a Christian. He was Jewish. If this thought intrigues you, you'll enjoy my new book, Light from Water, Freeing Jesus. It's available on Amazon.com and through fine bookstores. And it may help you on your spiritual journey. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like this video, subscribe, and ring the little bell to be notified when new videos come out. And if you'd like to arrange a private psychic and spiritual reading with astrology, just go to my website, internetpsychicreadings.com or professorastrology.com.